That was the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. When you find it, shout glory. glory. And it reads as thus. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. It's so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? I want to leave a thought for you on today. The storm did it. And I want y'all to help me pray. Say, Lord, Lord do, it do it again. You may be seated. The storm did it. We're living in a time now, and it seems as if the seasonal storms are not predictable by the forecasters. We have storms in places that we didn't think it was possible. The Gospel of Matthew and Mark, which are similar Gospels, speaks of earthquakes in divers or various places. These are the places that you would have never thought such a thing would take place. One may ask the question, what is the purpose of a storm? Why do storms come and where do they come from? Every storm has a purpose. Understanding that all storms are not supernatural. A snowstorm in the spiritual realm may be sent to purify the earth from some, uh, the summer seasonal germs, insects, rodents, and so on. A heavy rain can be signified as a washing of the earth. Storms can also be used to move us into our destiny or our next level in God. All those storms, they are not fun, and yet it is vital that we are prepared so we may stand strong and be in peace in present times, and recognize the Lord's hand in our circumstances. In Psalms 1, verse 3, it speaks of being like a tree planted by the water, staying connected with the Father to be able to weather the storms that may come our way. Sometimes our lives have to be completely shaken up, changed, and or rearranged to relocate us to the place where we are meant to be. Sometimes we can get content, complacent, and too relaxed where we are. Life is just like an elevator. In order to get to the next level, you have to push a button. <laughs> to get to the next level in God, you have to push for more of him. Push more prayer. Push more fasting. Push more worship. Push more praise. And definitely push more words. This passage of scripture, now that Jesus saw a multitude about him, he commanded the disciples to depart to the other side. When Jesus entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. While they were out at sea, there arose a great storm. It was so intense that the ship was being covered by the waves and maybe even the winds were rocking the ship. Just like life, it can be so overwhelming sometimes, and you think to yourself, if one more thing happens, I don't know what I would do. Your life storms make you feel like the disciples sometimes, and you feel as if Jesus is asleep. I can just imagine with my spiritual imagination that the disciples began to worry, and maybe one or two of them began to panic. When storms in our life come, we have to remember who is on the ship with us. During this storm, in this passage of scripture, three things were revealed about God. First, he revealed his power. He revealed who he was and his timing. Jesus asked the question, are ye fearful, O ye a little faith? The scripture let us know that he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great storm. I'm, I'm sorry, a great calm. 
In the middle of this storm, the disciples witnessed the power of Jesus. Aren't you glad that Jesus can speak and your circumstances be changed immediately? A storm in your life will allow you to see the power of Jesus working on your behalf and to increase your faith. Just believe God at his word. In the 13th chapter of Hebrew, the word tells us that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. The disciples marveled at what Jesus had done. When Christ does a thing in your life, or he changed a circumstance, he turned the bad into good. There should be a praise of thanksgiving on your lips, joy in your heart, and even a dance in your feet. Does anyone have a praise for what God has done and the storms that he has brought you out of? Because we all know that he didn't have to do it, but he did. Secondly, he revealed who he was. During a storm in your life, it allowed you to see God at his greatest. It is his power and his protection when the winds are blowing. He will be your umbrella when the rain is falling. Hide you in the time of trouble and your shelter in the time of storm. God will allow a storm so that your time of weakness, he is made strong. A storm will allow you to see where you are and help you step into where you need to be. Deacon Spears sings a song that I'm stronger than I've ever been before. And it's only because of what we've been through, it didn't kill us, it only made us stronger. God will use a storm to stir up your gifts, mold you into who he created you to be, purge out some things that's not of him, separate you from the things that we're constantly trying to hold on to that will hinder you from elevating. Last but not least, he revealed his timing. In this passage of scripture, God's timing was on time. Just when the disciples felt if they were in tip over mode, Jesus came to the rescue. He didn't make a fuss, nor did he make a lot of noise. The Bible declares that Jesus arose and there was a great calm. He arose on the third day over 2,000 years ago for the storms of today that's in your life. Aren't you glad that Jesus is an on-time God? He will show up just in time. The, when the pressure of life is getting heavy, God will show up. When the storm is getting unbearable, God will show up. We as a people of God must start dancing in the rain, giving God praise in the middle of the storm. Don't wait till the storm is over to give him praise. When you praise God in the middle of a storm, you're telling God that I believe you at your word. I know you're going to show up and I know you're working it out for my good. God has shown himself mightily time after time. We've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. When you're in a storm, we find the strength to encourage yourself. Pull yourself by the nape of your neck. Tell yourself, self, you're going to make it. You must go through it to get to it. When you're in the midst of a storm, take a 15-second victory flashback. If we take inventory and look back over our lives, we should have a praise unto God because it was the storm that moved us into our destiny. It was the storm that made us stronger than we've ever been. It was the storm that elevated your faith. It was the storm that turned your test into a testimony. It was the storm that turned an idea into an invention. It was the storm that magnified your praise. God used the storm to show his power. He used the storm to stir up your gifts that had been lying dormant for so long. He used the storm to mold you into what you need to be. He used the storm to purge out the things that's not like him. He allowed a storm to separate you from the things that you were holding on to that was a hindrance in your life. I thought about Swift Textiles closing. It was a storm to many workers in the town of Irwin. But to God be the glory. Out of that storm, Deacon Spears now owns his own trucking company. But if it had not been for that storm, this may have never come to pass. There were people that went back to school. 
and got their degrees that they never saw it possible. People were able to retire in good health. Thank God for your storm. As I prepare to take my seat, remember all storms are not bad. Even though some storms can be self-inflicted, God can still turn it around for your good. Hurricane Katrina in Rock, Louisiana. But even there was praise even after this. There were businesses that came out of that storm. People are better off now than they were before the storm. It was after the storm that Bishop Paul S. Morton birthed the song, I'm Still Standing. He testified how he had a nervous breakdown in 1998. Sickness attacked his grandchild at 18 months old. The hurricane that came through, it took his church, his house, and his automobile. His body was attacked with colon cancer. He was definitely in a storm, but he stood on the word of God. And he, God blessed him double for his trouble. Keep in mind when you're going through a storm, who is on the ship with you? You will come out all right. You will not look like what you've been through. There will be glory after this. You will be victorious. Rejoice in knowing that all storms are not bad. Some storms are meant for your good. You will rejoice knowing that God's got your back. He will come through on time. He will be your shelter. He will hide you in the time of trouble. Just rejoice knowing that the storm did it. The storm got you to where you are now. Just remember that the storm did it. The storm did it. The storm did it.